A golden opportunity. That's how regulatory lawyer Rajiv Sharma describes the landscape facing the vaping industry as a result of Bill S-5, Canada's draft federal vaping regulations. RegWatch spoke with Sharma back in January, just before our exclusive interview with Susie McDonald, Director General at Health Canada. In our two-part special called Adverse Impacts, we took a deep dive into some of the more troubling aspects of Bill S-5, primarily those around advertising and marketing, and the contentious provision which prohibits communicating the relative risk of vaping versus smoking. We reached out to Sharma because on behalf of his clients, he has extensive experience working with Health Canada, the Ontario Ministry of Health, and other provincial governments on a variety of healthcare files. Since then, Sharma has provided the vaping industry regular counsel on the evolving law and emerging regulatory environment. RegWatch caught up with Sharma at Canada's Vape Expo in Toronto. It's early days still. It's still winding its way through the House of Commons and there'll be committee work and, the, and, the, and really, it, it, you know, the, the regulations, that'll be the true test of where the detail comes and that's still to come. So I think there's a lot of work to do for the industry right now. There's a golden opportunity, I think, in the next year or so is to get, up, get to Ottawa, influence the decision makers, give them the rationale for why uh, things need to change in S5. For example, the restrictions on health claims and advertising, I think that's, that's still an issue. And that was a big issue when uh, we talked in January. Correct. And correct. it still is? And it still is. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's early, um, but I think, you know, uh, the industry has to do some really, really hard work, roll up their sleeves, because there's still opportunities to make changes, especially in the regulations, because that, that'll be where the detail is. It's a new industry, right? I mean, it's, it's a relatively nascent industry. I think there is some naivety in the industry on, uh, in terms of how to deal with a regulated industry. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, politics in Health Canada and a regulator like Health Canada is art and science. And, um, and while passion is great, I think there needs to be a little bit more than passion. And I think the passion in the end will definitely win out. And I don't think we should lose that as they should lose that as an industry. But I think we need to roll up our sleeves as professionals and show Health Canada, the regulators, that this is safe, it's effective, and that we're we as an industry, they as an industry, are ready uh, to be regulated. Our sense at RegWatch, when we had a chance to sit down actually with Susie McDonald, as you know, just almost right after right. we talked, they also do recognize that it's safer than smoking to a large degree, what that degree is. They won't put a number on it, but it's obviously substantially safer, or Health Canada wouldn't be moving at all to allow this if they didn't believe it was safe. Correct. Right, so with all of that in place, Boy, they already know that. So what really does the industry need to do? Uh, do they need to you know, put on the big boy pants and start to play hardball pol politics? Is that it? Or do they need to lose the passion and have more attention to the nuances uh, of it? W what exactly is it? Well, I mean, I think, I think there has to be a little bit of, uh, you know, standing up for the science. I mean, if, if we have science, if the industry has science and there is some science to support the harm reduction of vaping over smoking, we need to definitely grow that science and fund more science because Health Canada, I think, is hedging their bets. I think they know and anecdotally, more than anecdotally, with, with real evidence that uh, it is a, is a better strategy than smoking. But the political side of it, of course, is not so easy. Mm -hmm. So, so there's, a, there's a push and a, a pull between Health Canada and the politicians to make sure that we don't overly um, anxiously embrace vaping um, because the public isn't there yet. So I think it's complicated. Um, we got the sense from uh, uh, Susie McDonald that uh, she's got a boss and those bosses are the, are the politicians. Correct, and that's how our system works. Um, so I think it's a multi-pronged strategy that the industry has to engage in. Whether they'll, how tough one has to be is a delicate art. It's a, it's a balance and uh, you know, the government relations folks, the lawyers and all have to have a strategy to make sure that the Health Canada understands, the politicians understand, and frankly, grassroots. Uh, grassroots movement amongst Canadians to show them that uh, there is benefits to vaping over smoking. Sounds like to me that maybe a national public relations campaign might absolutely. be in order. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's the only way that politicians are going to look to Health Canada and say, okay, 
you know what, we are okay with, uh, with uh, loosening the regulations for, for, for example, making health claims about vaping over smoking. The industry has good government relations and public relations folks working on this. It's a tough job. Mm. You think going to every province, you're going to Health Canada, you're meeting with MPs. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, but absolutely they need a ground war. And that ground war takes time, and they have to convince, and and you know they have to they have to win hearts and minds of, of MPs, MPPs all over the country before this is gonna this is gonna go their way. Do you think Health Canada on the senators, because obviously they just went through the whole Senate process, were they listening? Have they heard? I think so. Uh, I mean, I, I think I think the. Uh, the public statements that Health Canada has made in terms of the harm reduction strategy and not essentially taking the Quebec government approach or the WHO approach saying no means it's working, means the advocacy campaign, means the science and the industry and all of its advocates, it's working. Um, and then the question is how far will it go and will the regulations be permissive of the things that the industry needs to do, which is to get its message out. A lot of vapors out there, and industry, when I've seen that, store owners and stuff like that, um, are unfamiliar with the regulation-making part of the process. They're unfamiliar on the legislation part, but now they're a little more familiar, and, and it's a bit uneasy for them because they don't understand that the legislation isn't necessarily what's operational. Correct. In yeah, that's right. And in the end, the regulations don't have to go through the same long-winded process as the actual legislation does. And the regulations are made by expert and expert committees in the in the back rooms, where where that's where all the detail is, and that's what the day-to-day -day activity of the vaping industry will will be regulated and by by the, the regulations, the regulations, not the actual legislation. Right. The legislation is generally just an umbrella. It's the law, and the details are all in the regulations. Is there an effort going on right now where the industry is preparing for that next phase, so where when it comes time, there's, here's an example, much like when I talked to you when we first reached out to you, I was, we want to find a lateral industry, nutraceuticals, pharmaceuticals, something like that, where you guys you know, are pretty adept at driving the bus. Are we at that point where the industry is trying to drive the bus with the regulations? We're going, here's some suggested language for what standards should be, here's a, some suggested language for retail guidelines, that kind of thing. My understanding is yes. I, I think we, you know efforts are being made at, uh, at all kinds of levels through lawyers and, and, and uh, government relations consultants to make sure that the politicians have suggested language or suggested approaches. And, and I think it, it, it's, it's upon the industry. I think the industry uh, has to take this time in the next year or so and realize that this is, this is it. This is a fundamental moment. This is an important moment for the industry. Uh, and what comes out of it at the end will be the result of the work in the next year. Well, I think the industry has to get organized. I think they have to, they have, to have codes of conduct. They have to have self-policing, self-regulation. They have to build, build governance structures within the industry. And that can only be done when the industry gets together and says, we, we should self-police before the regulator tells us what we can and cannot do. Because in, in many respects, industries that are mature, like pharmaceutical industry, largely self-police their compliance with these things. We've always heard from the industry, and rightly so, that they are very proud of the self-policing that they had already done. The message I'm hearing from this is that was just the start. That's just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Yeah, there's a lot of hard work to be done. So it's about earning trust with government. That's right. That's right. Uh,